I'll tell you what, I'll give you this one because I basically have them in the car, you know, so. You're sure? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Norm. Yeah. All right, this is, I'm absolutely going to be sporting this for a, for at le- the entirety of this episode. <laughs> if you turn off the camera, I'll yes. share something very personal sure. with you. My name is Dean Bogg, and this is episode 11 of Neighborhoods. If you're new to the show, it goes a little something like this. Every week I go on an adventure through a different Pittsburgh neighborhood. I document what I see, I talk to the people and animals of the area, and I give my own spicy opinions on the neighborhood. I moved here in on May 13th, my brother's birthday. 1963. Okay. Went that's to all... elementary school here. Yeah. Simple school was called. It no longer exists. Okay. This was a community where you wanted to raise a child. Because down here, all the merchants, it was real developed. Everything was going. The police lived in Wilkinsburg. So we had to respect them as they respected us. Schools, Allison Simple, Turner, Kelly, uh, uh, St. James. Walkersburg Junior High and Senior High. Uh-huh. As I grew up, like you see Walkersburg today, it wasn't like that when I was a kid. It was beautified down here. So what happened? The elderly, the older generation, our parents, started dying. And we as the offsprings coming up didn't carry that torch. We did, I did, I did because my kids are grown and gone. I'm 63. But the community, then kids start having kids and that started to change. Then people start moving away and Walkersburg start falling to what you see today. From the 1920s all the way through the 1960s, Wilkinsburg was one of Pittsburgh's most prosperous suburbs. At one point, Wilkinsburg was the country's most densely populated borough with 37,000 residents in an area of 2.2 square miles. People would come from all over to visit Wilkinsburg's downtown and shop at stores like Walmer's Hardware Company or the world-class department store, Caldwell & Graham. Then in the 1970s, the steel industry crashed and with it went Wilkinsburg's thriving community. Which I think when people think of Wilkinsburg, they initially think like, oh, Wilkinsburg, I heard it on the news and it was bad. Like we had a hard time in the 80s and 90s, um, but it's gotten so much better, but we still have that bad rap and the news loves to cover every little thing that is bad that happens here. So if we can just get the word out and be like, look at all these amazing shops and these amazing people that live here and are doing great things. Like I want more people, I want people to know about it. Like I want that reputation to go away. I will give credit to our council and our mayor and the WCDC, who's our community development corporation. They're doing a great job as like, as these new businesses that they're trying to bring in are coming in, they're being very mindful of like making sure it's not like flippers coming in, flipping all the houses. It's not, you know, just crappy like mini marts and stuff. Like they're really mindful of what businesses and who's coming into Wilkinsburg. At the end of the day, it is a really tight knit community and Everyone's just super friendly, which I don't think is the reputation that it will get. One of the first things that strikes you about Wilkinsburg is the murals. Huge, stunning, vibrant, the murals. Everywhere you go, they are fantastic. I'm a little confused when it comes to the borders of Wilkinsburg. I think there's some overlap between Regent Square and Point Breeze. For this episode, I'll be going off of the street signs. Wilkinsburg is a borough just outside of city limits, so it's technically not a part of Pittsburgh. Within city limits, the street signs are blue, and once you enter Wilkinsburg, the street signs change to green. Wilkinsburg is somewhat split down the middle by these train tracks and the busway. On the west side of the tracks, towards the city, exists a rather affluent section of Wilkinsburg. The houses here are big, beautiful, and extremely well taken care of. 
book, anyone? The area has a sort of bohemian creativity to it that I just can't get enough of. What, at, what attributes make a good baker? Runs food processor. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty good at the food process. <laughs> um, willing to work long hours and it's a lot of heavy lifting, so you just need, really need to have the endurance to be on your feet. Strong back. Yeah, you have to be pretty passionate about it too, because if you don't have like the desire to do it. Are you still talking? Yeah, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I drowned my voice out, I don't mind. The thing about Wilkinsburg is... <laughs> Besides just the art, a lot of people are a part of the community. There's a lot of like, like a lot of people here compost. They care about the environment. They care about... Um, who they vote for. Yeah. yeah, they care about who they vote for. Yeah, the recycling. We can't recycle anything over here. That's been big controversy. We can't do glass anymore. Um, I don't know how our recycling company, they won't take any plastics. They'll only take cardboard. And we try, like, we compost here ourselves and we try very hard to be good to the environment. This building used to be anything you could possibly imagine. It was a recording studio, it was a post office, it was a yoga studio. Um, we actually have pictures. A lady stopped in the other day. It was so adorable. A lady stopped in the other day and her parents owned it in the 50s when she was a little girl. So she gave us pictures of the building. Oh, we didn't get a bell. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry about it. Not here. Or actually, wait, hold on. Can it be better? Oh yeah, this is as good as it gets. <laughs> Beekeeping is something that she's really resonated deeply with. Our garden has thrived better than it ever has since starting beekeeping, and. Uh, Throughout the whole, you know, process, we've now become a registered member of the National Audubon Society. That little guy, that's yeah. what's called a nuke, and so that is like where they start um, the hive creation process with the queen. Mostly what I do as an assistant is swarm control. So whenever they get out of hand and they flock to a tree branch or a bush or something like that, which they have many times in the past, especially when we hit it eight hives total. Is this type of thing uh, common in Wilkinsburg? Mm, we're hoping that it becomes more common. Okay. Uh, I, I know, know there's a house down there that has some chickens in their backyard. Yep. Livestock, livestock cultivation is common. Wilkinsburg has a pretty lax um, and, in my opinion, reasonable uh, regulation structure for keeping livestock in an urban setting. I think that if we can in any way bring back our own small scale sustainability, even just for one family at a time, that's nothing but a good thing. It's just a snowball effect if we can grow that popularity instead of having big lawns. I want to turn this into a big jungle garden. On the east side of the tracks, away from the city, is an area that's still recovering from the crash of the steel industry. There are currently about 800 vacant homes in Wilkinsburg, and many of them are ripe for restoration. If you're a developer looking to knock these places down and build apartments or condos, go fuck yourself. But if you're somebody looking for a place to lay down roots and buy a house and be part of a community, Wilkinsburg might be a good place to look. Wilkinsburg has the nickname Will Killiansburg, but the only thing that I've been killed with is kindness. That was cheesy, but it's true. The residents here and the borough and organizations like Community Forge or The Sleeping Octopus are working their tails to the bone to bring this place back to life, and it's working. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Almost, uh, 
I got like, punched down. Yeah, punched it down. It is really on the brink of changing pretty quickly. And there's a lot of um, question as to which way it will change. And so a lot of development has been coming down Penn. Our kind of hope is that a lot of local small businesses um, are able to get maybe some footing in Community Forge or throughout the neighborhood and kind of start to take uh, their businesses like two other places along Penn and help really do the redevelopment there so that it's not like large external chains coming in. So it is Community Forge, um, seems like it has many purposes, but is one of them to be an incubator for local businesses in Wilkinsburg? Yeah. Yeah. And have you so been having... So we have yeah. two focuses, like I was saying, that kind of developed. One is really being a space for youth. One is being a kind of incubator of local businesses. This is a new segment of the show that's all about trash. It was inspired by the Reddit community and their efforts with the trash tag, so shout out to r slash Pittsburgh. The, I, the idea is that I see how long it takes me to fill one bag of trash. This is a way for me to give back to the neighborhood that I'm filming in. Um, I'm calling it the trash bag time trial, and I encourage you to give it a shot in your own neighborhood and see how long it takes. minutes and 40 seconds. Now, this is the first time I'm doing this, so I have no reference point, but I imagine that's pretty quick. Well, we're at Krabs R.S. 764 Penn Avenue. We specialize in seafood, but we also have other things. We got salads, steaks, we got wings. We sell breakfast every day, seven days a week, and um, that's that. In the next five years, say, mm -hmm. How would you like to see Wilkinsburg move forward or improve? Um, well, there's a lot of empty storefronts, so I feel like there's a lot of opportunity for more businesses in the area. Just being, who's that, whoever's in charge, in so many words, I'll, I'll word it like that, just getting them more in touch with the people, finding out what the people want. You know what I mean? Like, there might be certain avenues, certain businesses that the neighborhood might actually need. You know what I'm saying? So, so I would say just more communication with the neighborhood, I would say. That's that, a great that would, answer. Yeah, I would believe that, that would be the best, the best way to move forward, but not hurt anybody, if that makes any sense also. So. Absolutely. But since we've been in this neighborhood, we were inspired by the people that are here that have already been here, that have been doing work here for so long, that have stuck it out in the community. You know, there's creative, unique individuals that are Wilkinsburgers, you know, and that inspired us to do our part, whatever that is, to help in some capacity, Yeah. you know. I find that I kind of fall in love with every neighborhood that I cover, but hot damn, Wilkinsburg has blown me away. Despite the progress that's been made, there are still a lot of impoverished people in Wilkinsburg. If you can, please consider donating to one of the local food banks. Um, I know East End Food Co-op is a great organization doing wonderful things that is not too far from Wilkinsburg. We just left the bees guy. Jim. With a, yeah, Jim. With a mouthful of this uh, baguette from Madeline's Bakery. I feel a call in my pocket. Look, I said, oh, Jim Bees is calling me. Hey, Jim. Hey, do you guys want some honey? 
<laughs> yeah, we want some honey. Yeah, we'll come, we're gonna come back and get some honey. We're walking back. Don't worry, Jim. <laughs>